may have a shot. It's not clean. Repeat, I do not have a clean shot. There's a tunnel ahead. I'm gonna lose them. Can you get into a better position? Negative, there's no time. Take the shot. I said take the shot. I can't, I may hit bonds. Take the bloody shot. Sexist, misogynist dinosaur. A relic of the Cold War. Shaken, but not stirred. 007 reporting for duty. These are the 00 files. Good day, everybody, and welcome to a podcast of the 00 files. Um, my name is Anthony, and I'll be discussing elements of a Bond, uh, Bond film. I'm not going to do this on my own. With me are three members of the 00 files would you please be so kind to shout out your name Dom Tyler Martin thank you especially you Dom <laughs> um, okay a brief explanation what we did we took the pre-titled sequences of all 24 Bond films and we graded them individually one point being the lowest we would give and five points being the highest we uh, could give for a uh, pre title sequence and of course, you you needed to give some ones and also some fives and, and numbers in between. And then we made a list in Excel and you see if that, we see. Right? Yeah, I love to see if we throw any differences <laughs> between us. And um, so yeah, that's what we did. So let's kick off with maybe the most important question of this podcast: What is the definition of a good Bond pre-title sequence for you, well, Don? Bond needs to swim with a duck on top of his head. <laughs> that's <laughs> in, in all pre title sequences. In every pre title sequence, uh, that's, a, doesn't matter that's where a huge is. benefit, yeah, I think. No, not necessarily. What I love from a pre title sequence is if it's a standalone mission, like if it's a, a, like an in between mission, like um, something that happens after the previous film and before the next film actually starts, and it bears no no notion or whatsoever on the actual story. So some pre-title sequence, they try to be almost standalone missions. Mm -hmm. For instance, with uh, Tomorrow Never Dies, with the uh, Arms Bazaar, you think, oh, this is actually has nothing to do with the film. But then it there's does, yeah. Gupta with the GPS encoder, and they sneaked it in there anyway. But I like the missions on itself. I there really are only like a them. handful of films. Not that, that have... many. That's right. And uh, some are really strange then again also. But we're going to yeah. delve into that. Okay. But that's what I like. So you really want it to be a standalone film? Standalone mission. With everything in there, so you need a girl and excitement and explosions and gadgets and everything yeah. crammed into five minutes, six, maybe, seven. I completely seven. agree with you yeah. on that. Okay. I really want the pre-title sequence to be a standalone film and have action, a bit of humor. It's like a nice Marvel girl. one shot, but yeah. then a 007 one shot. Almost. And it's really, yeah. it's, it's like, it's, it gets you excited for the film that is, uh, you know, about to be, uh, about to come. So that's, that's what I think should be the, the function of a pre-title sequence. Tyler, what's your definition of a good pre-title sequence for a Bond film? It has to be short. Just like my answer. <laughs> uh, no, no, it has, it has to be short. And I do like it when it has some connection to the plot, but not as much. Like what they did in GoldenEye, for instance. It's a, it's a standalone mission it has a, a beginning a middle and an end but it does have something to do with the rest of the film quite a lot actually with goldeneye yeah goldeneye might not be the best example but it's it's like but you don't know that until halfway through the film that's yeah. true yeah that's um, true that's it for me okay okay martin yeah i don't really care too much if it's like relative to uh, or related to the rest of the film or not i mean i really do enjoy uh, the octopusy one even though there's nothing that comes along uh, into the, the rest of the film. But I just really want this one big stunt which ma makes you go, yeah, this is like this is it. I'm really watching a Bond movie now. 
For example, taking uh, a plane out of a horse's ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's the favorite of my sons. He loves that part. When I, but the, how cool is it to just drive along with a car with a trailer, just running exactly. the speakers, and a Michael Jet just comes out exactly. of it. Exactly. That's what my son said. He said yeah. that. It's so I told cool. Them, I told him, we're going to record this podcast uh, today about pre-title sequences. What do you like? And he said... I don't know how they fit an airplane into a <laughs> horse's carriage. How did they do that? So, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Perfect. Should any of our listeners know the answer to this question, please let us know. Well, they actually just did it, right? I mean, yeah, but how did they do it? That's the question. I mean, you fold up the, the wings and then, I don't know, stuck but it in there. But uh, how did Vodge get in it? And how did the horse get out on time? I don't know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, um, so on. let's get to the 24 pre-title uh, sequences. As I said before, we all graded them, giving a one, two, three, four, or five. So four of us. So a film can have a maximum score of 20 points and a minimum of four. Right. If we all gave it a one. If we all gave a it a one. Or and yeah. we, we cheated a bit, right? Because Dr. No of doesn't course. have a pre-title sequence. No, so we decided to take the, the three blind mice. Shooting. Uh, yeah, walk along as uh, the pre-title sequence. Let's kick off with uh, the bottom three uh, pre-title sequences. And only nine points, you just mentioned it, is the three blind mice uh, pre-title sequence. Oh, really? That's yeah. uh, the one with the least points? No, 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 no. It's uh, There are two pre-title sequences who have even less points than uh, oh, wow. the one of Dr. No, but let's kick off with this one. We have we gave it in total of nine points. That's not that many. No. no yeah, you bit. gave it three points, Don. I like it. What do you like about it? I love the effort that the, the hitmen put into their henchmanship, walking around Jamaica for the entire day probably i like the fact that it starts within the title sequence mm -hmm. i like the music which is absolutely perfect i love the way jamaica looks it's so pretty so colorful and then they walk up to queen's club and you get this weird bridge game and some guy has to leave and you don't know what's going on but he he walks to his car and he's just being nice and friendly and he gives some money to these poor people and he wants to uh, get in his car and all of a sudden he's shot. It's like, what's going on there? I don't know. It's When I first saw that, I was shocked. I was absolutely shocked. What is going on here? I really like that scene. Yeah. When I watch it, I always have to think about what the person who played, the actor who played Strang Race, he, he says it in one of the documentaries that he... Yes, well, I'm six foot one, and they only put six feet of me in the in the car. In the car. So when they slammed the door, <laughs> yeah. they slammed it on my head, and I, I'm um, still feeling it. But yeah, yeah, I think it's a, a very good start of a film. Yeah, it is a nice start of a film, but if you compare it to all those other pre-title sequences, yeah, but they it's didn't a bit exist boring. yet. No, of course, but <laughs> no. In hindsight, looking back at it, it's you still give it three points, Don. Yeah. So you think it's better. Then, for instance, um, oh, Caramanga's training. So the yeah. opening of the Man with Golden Gun. You yeah. only give it two points. I don't like that one. No, you don't. No, I don't like that one. Tabasco. That's, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I apologize sense. for the hearing of all of our listeners. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, it's just silly. So you prefer Three Blind Mice? I definitely prefer the okay. Three Blind Mice. Right. Right. But that's just me, guys. I think it's a nice middle of the road beginning of a movie. It's not terribly good. It's not terribly bad. It's just there. Well, three. Yeah. Three out of five. That's yeah. pretty much... Yeah. 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 So that were nine points for three blind mice. Seven points were handed out for three operatives dead from A Live and Let Die, the opening sequence. Well, it's I've an opening that. sequence yeah. for a Bond film without Bond. Eh? Like, what are we supposed to do with this? It's mm. just so generic and nothing really happens and just like, oh, yeah, there's three people. Oh, they're dead. Right, let's go on. What I don't like about this one is because... Plenty of stuff happens, I think. I mean, you get three assassinations. Yeah, but it doesn't really entice you into, like, no. it doesn't set you up for no. anything. It it's doesn't no action, mean anything nothing. No. no, you no. have no idea what's going on. I, I think what they should have done is just kick off with a cool pre title sequence, then come up with the titles, and then show the, the killing of the three operatives. Start the film, the actual film, with these three killings. Uh, yes. And you want, exactly. the, you want the pre title sequence to just have a standalone, cool something action with Roger Moore. scene. Introducing Roger Moore as 007. That sounds like a good idea, actually. Can yeah. we go back in time and <laughs> fix this? <laughs> I, I, my biggest problem with this pre-title sequence is that they are not really cool assassinations. I mean, no. if someone would have, I don't know, been dropped out of a blimp, for instance, or... Without a parachute. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> something, something like that. But it's just a guy with a rubber snake and a guy with the... 
A red well, wire. I, I do like the, uh, yeah. Yeah. I like the second one, though. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, I like the second one. That's very cool. Yeah. That's a yeah. good one. With uh, Hamilton, was it? Yeah. With the casket. Whose uh, funeral is it? Yours. <laughs> Got seven points, right? You got seven points in yeah. total, yeah. Yeah, it's not one of the best. No. Is it that the fact that Bond is missing as a person? No, well, doesn't help. Well, I think, it's, like we said, it, nothing major happens when we don't have any connection to the people getting killed. We no. just, you're just watching it. Just if you start a Bond film, you don't want it to start with the most boring speech ever at the uh, building of the United Nations. It's like. You're you're putting your audience to sleep even before mm-hmm. your film actually starts. It's yeah. like not a good way to to begin, I think. But however, there is <laughs> one Bond film that even that less even, point. <laughs> even less points. It only has six points, which is the search for Blofeld, Diamonds Are Forever. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. We all know uh, by now, Don, that you <laughs> don't particularly like diamonds. No, I'll shut I was up say, for a This moment. is the example that you don't actually like having Bond in your pre-title doesn't make sure it's a good pre-title. Making mud pies, 007. It actually is like almost like a standalone mission, even. How did it ever get six points? <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. Um, Martin oh. and I both gave two points, I guess. Okay, for, uh, go ahead. Sequence. What are the redeeming factors of this pre-title sequence? The score, the score, the score. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> that's about pretty, the, the, the side burns. Burns. <laughs> The, the sideburns, <laughs> definitely. I love, I love the way how um, how Sean just lifts his hands when he wants to grab his gun in just the most nonchalant way. Of oh, man, you are set, grasping. Setting up a gun. Uh, no, and, and I also straws. like uh, the, you know, the part prior to the, the mud pie. So uh, we see, or don't see him, but the opening in the, the casino, in of, uh, the opening in, in Japan, and then the casino. And then we got... Now we're uh, but you like the way he takes off the bra. And then, uh, there yeah, you exactly. go. And That's exactly. That's worth one Marie. extra point. That's <laughs> what I like as well. I like how he uh, gets rid of the bra. And we have, of course, the, the cool berry sound. So that's why it gets two points for me. <gasps> But this is the lowest ranking pre-title sequence yes, for us. It is, yes, yeah. this is the worst Deserve- opening of all Bond so. films. Yeah. yeah, I think. All right, then let's jump to the top three. Let's go to greener pastures. Let's we'll start with the number three. Sure. Well, actually, we have two number threes. Two films that we graded in a total of eighteen points for the pre-title sequence. Eighteen out of twenty. Eighteen out of twenty. Wow. It is shocking, positively shocking. Ooh. And free fall from Moonraker. So Goldfinger and Moonraker, a shared third place. Well Tyler, deserved, I think. Uh, yeah, well, I'm <laughs> the only one who didn't give shocking, positively shocking, uh, five points. Actually, you only really? gave it three points, right? Yeah, exactly. Why? I, I actually What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> I probably had a seagull stuck to my head. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. I, I, I know it's iconic, and I know, but nothing much is happening. I mean, it's not there. There are no no real great stunts in there. He just skills a wall and kicks a guard and something explodes. Blows up a silo. Yeah, but... But remember how he enters the bar? How cool he looks? I was going to say, just like, isn't it like every guy's sort of, well, Bond kind of fantasy, you know, Bond sneaking around somewhere, just getting rid of your spy gear and having your dinner jacket underneath? No, no, no. Like I I said, I understand why it's iconic. (laughs) I just don't think it's the best. So, but I... I can see where you're coming from. Well, this pretty much sums up my uh, summary of um, what I give at the beginning. What should a good pre-title sequence, in my opinion, have? And 
it ticks all the boxes. Mm -hmm. I really like that. It has some escapism, some fantasy, like uh, the reflection in her eye. Mm -hmm. uh, to, and I like, I like it how he then uses the girl as a shield, a complete <laughs> bastard. <laughs> no. And then the frantic fight. And yeah, it's a good pre turtle sequence, I think. I agree. And I, once again, I really like the, the moment he enters the bar and you hear this cool sound in the background. And then he just he takes a cigarette and he looks so cool and uh, totally in control. Bond looks genuinely pleased with himself. Right, what yeah. he just yeah. did. Very cool. It's supposedly set in Mexico, right? Yeah. yeah. It, uh, in from there he goes to, to uh, Miami. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Shocking. Positively shocking. It's a good one. And the other one was Moonraker. Yeah. The other one was Moonraker. It's like, how can it be so low? Tron, hey, I'm, any higher, no. I'm, I'm looking at you. <laughs> any higher, Mr. Bond, it my ears will pop. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm, am I the only one who didn't give it five points? Oh, uh, what yeah. did I give it? I give it... Uh, I give it five? Yeah. Huh? We all did, except you, Anthony. I gave it three, I guess. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, stunt work is amazing, but... I think the entire scene is Spoiled. made no made less yeah, exciting because of the silly humor in it. Uh, the flying yeah, jaws. Yeah, Richard Gill yeah. jumping out of the plane, uh, trying to <laughs> to fly by himself, and then drops into a circus tent. No, it's and then the the, the sound that you hear when he's trying to fly as well. At the end, yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. I think, ah, oh, man, you have a great stunt, great opening, and then you do things like that. I, I'm not sure. Ruins the scene. I'm not for sure me. whether I, I should save this story for the actual Moonraker episode, but I think Moonraker was, was the first Bond movie that I ever saw. It might be Octopussy, but Moonraker was the one that made a very large impression on me when I saw it for the first time. We were staying at a, at a very posh hotel in Amsterdam, and me and a friend were watching Moonraker, and we spent the rest of the day jumping on the beds, reenacting the pre-title sequence of Moonraker. And who are you? <laughs> Jaws or a Bond or the pilot? P probably uh, each of them. <laughs> but no. there's lot, lots to love about this pre-title sequence. Yeah, there is. This, yeah. It starts with the with the huge airplane, right? The um, the is it a Boeing with the shuttle on yeah. top? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you got the the sneaky uh, thieves uh, that crawl out of their hiding places and they sneak out. And you got the the pilots that are just enjoying their flies. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Just jolly what, what, Yeah, exactly. They're having a, a jolly good old chat, and then all of a sudden. Wait a moment, the moon rig is lifting off. What do you mean? And then they explode. That's a strong scene. Ah, yeah. that's horrible. And then um, you got a good M scene as well with Money Penny. <laughs> Tell him to pull yeah. out mm -hmm. immediately. No that pun is good. intended. <laughs> <laughs> and none whatsoever. You get a beautiful girl uh, with Roger Moore. You get the funny pilot with the goggles. Yeah, yeah I all get that. I all get that. <laughs> the, 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 the excellent stewardess. song, as, uh, the music, as soon as Jaws starts his dive. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. I'm still with you. But and then he starts <laughs> flapping, his arms, starts flapping <laughs> his arms, and we get this. If we just cut off the last thirty seconds, you probably give it a five. Then I would have given well, it a yeah. five. Yes, definitely. So sorry. There you go. It's a it's a nice scene. It's a nice pre-title sequence, but it's not the best for me.
Oh, well. Two more to go. Number two. It's a favorite. It has 19 points. Ooh. Wait, does this mean that the, the first place actually has 20 points? Don't spoil it, Don. Oh, I'm, I'm curious. I'm really very curious. No, yeah, I'm not I'm yeah, going to read it. Okay, I'm you don't know yet which No, I don't know yet. Okay, no, number two is for... Um, the Acrojet Getaway yeah. from Octopussy. Octopussy. So one of them, one of us made a typo, right? <laughs> <laughs> for only scoring 19 points. I don't know. Who gave it four? Yeah, Was it, uh, no, it's Anthony again. Was it you again? Yep. Don't know why I gave it four. Could be that when I fill in yes, tomorrow I can give it maybe two or one. So you're no, a five. Five. <laughs> <laughs> This no, is really the pinnacle, right? To, well, to, one of them at five least. Fire away, Tyler. Well, it's, it's just such a nice mini adventure. It has... Well, it has Bond with a reversible cap and a reversible jacket saying goodbye to a beautiful lady. Have um, you seen that jacket in uh, Bond in Motion? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have it? It's so nice. Oh, yeah. they should bring that back. Something like that. Yeah, and then just he, he gets caught. and uh, Just rewind two seconds, just a little bit of like uh, Roger, he's po- posing as a colonel. Wasn't and it? Well, he just flexes that guard. Pass. And he's pay just like, yeah. <laughs> 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 the, the cockiness of it is just True. amazing. So you're a Toro too. I like that one. <laughs> oh, it's well. very good. Right. So and I like the, um, the, the, the truck driver. Yeah. The, uh, the look on his face. Yeah. Oh, he's so <laughs> with the beautiful no. girl driving past. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just, to me, it's, it, it, it is everything that makes Roger Morse yeah. ten, ten Maybe you should have given it five points. Fill her up, please. Yeah. Now we, we all a, make mistakes. Now we have a, a real number one, at least. We have a real number one. I am so curious. What you want to take a guess, this? or uh, I'm just gonna is throw it, it in is there? A, is it a Gibraltar? Do you want to you know already the answer? Already oh, know. Do you already know the answer, Martin? Well, I I've got one in my mind, which it should be. Otherwise, you all preview are wrong. But <laughs> okay, <laughs> shall I so, just shout it out? Yeah. Okay. Da, 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 da. Yeah, Union Jack. <laughs> Union Jack skiing spiraled off me. It's peak bond in every single way. 20 points. We all gave it 5 points. Yeah, deservedly so. Yeah. You, you look a bit disappointed, Don. I was hoping for Gibraltar. No, but didn't even make <laughs> it top 3. Oh, man. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, Spy is good. Spy is really good. As you said, it has a big stun. It's uh, not relevant to the, to the rest of the movie. It's got the girls, got the gadget. Not relevant to the film. Well, not he to kills like the, the, main... the, the Russian bloke, right? The... Yeah, but that's just like a sort of sidetrack to add a little backstory. It's not actually related to Stromberg's whole plan. Uh, okay. I'll go along with you slightly. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Goldeneye? I'm just curious about that. Well, it falls short. It doesn't have Union Jack parachute. That's the issue. It Goldeneye. has a few issues. I have a few issues with gold on it. got 17 points. 17. That's so quite high, yeah. It's, it's, it's still in the top place, five, six or so, but not in the top three. Yeah. Anything else on Spy? It has uh, all the things that pre-title sequence needs to have. It has action. It has a great stunt, a really great stunt. Good score. Bon- a, a girl. I was going to say, one of the most uh, groovy Bond themes you. ever. Yeah. So does England. Ta-da. Yeah. All right. Uh, cool villain. Difficult question. Which of the two is better? Um, the actual pre-title sequence of The Spider Love Me or the Alan Partridge sketch? <laughs> no, that's a, that's, Stop that's, getting that's, bought wrong! <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough one. <laughs> Yeah, that one just went over my head. Uh, I really have really? something. I, apparently, I have. Wow. Yeah. No, but Shame re- recently, um, the oldest boy back home, he's eleven. He needed to give a presentation at school, and it, uh, the topic was heroes. And they gave <laughs> some examples like Nelson Mandela and uh, Gandhi, and, and then he said to me, "I want to do it about James Bond. Do you think the teacher would uh, uh, would, would allow me to?" I said, "Yeah, of course. Just do it." <laughs> and so I helped him make a PowerPoint. 
and he said, I want to show one small clip, and it has to be really cool. So I you know, showed him some clips, and then we <laughs> get down to this sequence where he skis Skiing off the, the, the mountain, mountain yeah. and he said, yeah, that has to be in it. And he said that all the kids in the class said, wow, wow, did they really do that? That's the computer, right? No, it's not a computer. Yeah, it has to be a computer. Doesn't exist yet. No, back in 77, they all did it really. Have you read the John Glenn autobiography for My Eyes Only, I think it's uh, called? Yeah, I read it. And he starts, the first chapter is, uh, he describes how he did that. Because he was hired as a second unit director for mm -hmm. this stunt and they went to, to Canada with uh, Rick Sylvester, yeah. uh, who performed the stunt. And it's so funny when you read that, when he's actually having doubts, how can Rick Sylvester, who's supposed to be very short, is a short uh, guy, Gun. how how can he pose as Bond? And he never actually did it because he was hired because of some sort of advertisement, mm -hmm. but that was faked. So oh, it, yeah. it has um, so many issues. They were waiting for weeks the over there in the, in the cold, in the... In the horrible weather, and they just had one shot, and they got it, and it's amazing. It's yeah. the perfect shot. Yeah, they had the perfect shot. Yeah. Four camera guys. I think and only so, one yeah. actually yeah, one had a shot. Yeah. Yeah. shot. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Still and and also it. how it smoothly goes into the title song. Yeah. With the girl that picks up the, um, the parachute. Yeah. Yeah, and in the making of, they also mentioned, and I can imagine it, that in, in, in England it brought down the house when they, sh yeah. when they yeah, saw yeah, the Union Jack, innovation. of course. And the banana suit. <laughs> and the <laughs> banana suit. <laughs> yep, the banana suit. Yeah. some interesting tidbits maybe because um, we never uh, have more than two points apart from each other when we um, graded the pre-title sequences there are some small differences for instance the man with the golden gun Tyler and Martin you both scored it with four points no um, and both of you got yeah, it wrong yeah and Don and myself only two points so yeah that's there you go a bit of a difference here <laughs> Four points, really? Bond isn't even in. Yeah. yeah as, or I, he's uh, standing uh, quite still <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> Losing his fingers. And his manliness. So why four points? Because it's cool. It's, it's, uh, I love the set design with all the um, all the, the different rooms and the the illusions. and, and just, I don't know, it just works for me. It really builds up the tension. It gives you an insight of, uh, of who Scaramanga is. I don't know, I just really enjoy it. Yeah, it, it, it just works for me especially because you return to the fun house at the end of the movie as well. Mm. So you know what's coming. And also, I don't know if you guys have that as well, but this uh, assassination guy is supposed to be the, uh, it's the same guy from Goldfinger. So like you try to make the link as a Bond fan that, you know, is sort of comes to Diamonds, yeah. Diamonds, yeah. yeah. Diamonds, Diamonds, yeah. yeah. Oh. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, I I didn't know there was a pool oh, down there. there. Yeah. That guy, right? That guy, yeah. yeah. It's, so it's, it's fun to imagine that he just went on and yeah. lived so the So why only the two day. points then? Um, what's wrong with you two? No, well, because <laughs> I like the sequence. I would have preferred, just as I said with Live, Let, Die, that it would have been the first sequence after we had the opening titles and it would introduce us to the bad guy and just have a pre-title sequence with Bond. Um, however, when I think about it, uh, if we're talking about the film For Your Eyes Only, I would have enjoyed it if it would have been the other way around. So skip with the whole blow fell down a chimney sequence the St. Kick. George's as a uh, pre-title. Yeah, and mm. the, the killing of the Havelocks. Mm -hmm. And then end the focus on the eyes of Melina. Yeah, I was going to uh, say, I thought that was and supposed to be... The title sequence. Yeah. I think that would have been a really strong opening for the film. And now it's kind of a mm -hmm, one, yeah. one opening. Just a few thoughts on The Man with the Golden Gun. Why I don't like it that much. I don't like it that Bond's not in it. Also because it kind of spoils the film a bit. You know, at the beginning of the film already how it's going to end. Especially how Scaramanga is going to lose, uh, which is well, too predictable. Well, there's only after multiple viewings. I mean, 
Yeah, if you're a kid, if you watch it for the first time, you might you not be guess, sort of but if you have um, any amount of intelligence, you probably know where this film is going to go by the end of it. Also, it has many inconsistencies um, with the rest of the film, like... Um, but again, yeah, if only if you know the film. Uh, how can Miss Anders don't know who Bond is, even if Scaramanga has a statue of him? Why would you keep a statue of your biggest enemy there with a loaded gun? Uh, and the whole fun house, you like it, Tyler, you say? It works for I you? Do. And yeah. I, for yeah. some reason, it works for you. And for some reason, I just think it's very silly. I, know, to mm. have I can see where you're coming from. But. And I looked at, this is very stupid. I don't like the tracksuit. Scaramanga's uh, <laughs> tracksuit. <laughs> <laughs> he looks awful. In it. no. yeah. It's yeah. the early it's Mr. Yeah. 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 I like the island. It's a beautiful island. I like Miss Anders. Beautiful Miss Anders. I, I like how, like the we, third nipple, how, we, uh, how Scaramanga enters the beach and uh, Miss Anders is... You know, um, touching him with um, with the yeah. towel, and he's 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 not giving her any attention whatsoever. And the the look on her face, uh, I like that little bit. So two points. Okay, by far the most, well, no, not by far, but the most favorite pre-title sequence from us is Union Jack skiing from the the spiral loved me. However, that doesn't mean that it's your personal favorite. So I would like to know what is your personal favorite pre-title sequence. I'm going to start with um, you, Martin. Uh, well, if I don't want to pick the Union Jack skiing, I'm probably going to go for License to Kill because it's such a very good Bondian thing to mm -hmm. do. It's a very cool scene. I love the score. What did he promise you? His heart? Give her his heart. And just the whole ending has got some humor in there. It's got some drama. It sets up some characters for the rest of the film. It's got the whole package, really. I love the father-in-law in that. Della's father. I told you this was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your favorite, uh, Don? Uh, Gibraltar, Living Daylights. I think that's absolutely perfect. I still haven't been to Gibraltar. That's uh, it's on my list to go, but... What a way to introduce a new Bond. Oh, man. With the, um, the double O's, the exercise, the, the mole in there. Oh, I love the, the stunt work. It has everything. It has the, the, the pretty lady on the boat. If only I could find a real man. I love, to <laughs> I love the way that you actually see Timothy Dalton's face for the first time. Um, Turning with around the wind, and menacing. Uh, yeah. uh, oh, he does look amazing. Cool. He's great. I love him. They shot it in the studio, right? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a studio shot. But he's you, don't, you don't see it. Not really. You don't see that. So that that is, is a studio shot. Yeah, not really. I think it's very well it's done. Very well yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. And then to imagine that he was actually on top of those jeeps for, yeah, for, yeah, for, for part, parts of the, yeah. and you get like four or five times that Paul Weston has to get out of the way. One of the stunt guys, yeah. he's in it quite a lot, and you get the the perfect line. Hey, hold on, you're dead. It's yeah. like, oh, that's <laughs> perfect. Yeah, I love that scene. Tyler, I I have four or fives on my list. We've discussed all of them already. Moonraker, because of the rose-tinted glasses. Like I said, one of the first uh, first Bond movies I ever saw. Octopussy, because it's just a romp. It's, 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 it has everything. Also love, of course, the, the Union Jack parachute. But I'm the only one who gave the GoldenEye pre-title sequence five points. I remember being at the cinema for the first time at a new Bond film and... It, it just brought the house down. First of all, the, the, the great stunt with the, with the bungee cord and then just the, the free falling after a plane and getting it and, and then the explosion. And it, it really brought the house down. Everybody was cheering. And, and that's something that I'll never forget. You can't win. My personal favorite, we already discussed it, is um, Shocking, Positively Shocking. It's, it doesn't have a great stunt, but it is so utterly cool. I can watch it over and over again. But so, also, one so, sec. How come it didn't end up on the PowerPoint presentation of your... Uh, yeah, he didn't like it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but it has a seagull. <laughs> he was in charge. <laughs> yeah, so now he wanted to have some action in there. 
Um, but I also have an opium factory. Yeah, isn't action enough. <laughs> Probably not for a kid these days. Shocking. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to have an honorable mention for the opening of Spectre. Actually, I gave it five points. I think it's by Fair far, enough. Yeah. by far yeah, the best of the entire <laughs> film. And I remember seeing it for the first time on, on the openings day. The one shot is amazing. I'll give the it that. The one shot. That is. You mean the very three shot? Good. Yeah, which is actually a three <laughs> shot. But I, I, I love everything about that sequence. It's so strong. The one shot, three shot. The 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 atmosphere from the day of the dead um, there's the one girl on the in roof, there there's yeah. a cool villain in there has a really I, cool face I think yeah. and uh, you can say that Craig looks so cool uh, walking yeah. over that roof he is it's all downhill from there but it, this is a brilliant <laughs> film uh, opening sorry yeah I give you that I give you that yeah it's a, it's a good good pre-title sequence has any one of you seen Birdman yes yes that I mean the, the whole one shot thing started there I guess no it's also by uh, Alfonso Cuaron uh, no no it's about, it's Birdman. Not, it's, no, it's not our Mexican um, director, Alfonso Cuarón from The Children of Men. Yeah, which but has a great didn't he do Birdman? O- no. Really? Hey, really. I'm going to look it up. That's okay. okay. <laughs> so, pre-title sequences of the Bond films. Um, the number one was the Union Jack skiing. Number two, Octopussy, Ac- Acro Jet Getaway. And number three were the opening from Goldfinger and Moonraker. Guess that's it for now, guys. Here we go. It's Alejandro Inaritu. That's or not, something like that. That's not Alfonso Cuaron. That's not Alfonso Cuaron, no. <laughs> All right. No. Is it a fellow Mexican? Yeah, there. But that's not Mexican a real Ramos. one shot, right? As well, that film. No, that, no, no it's two or three not. shots it's as stitched well. stitched together. Uh, how, there is one film that is one shot. It's 140 minutes long. It's Victoria, a German film, released a couple of years ago. I heard about that one, yeah. That's a really strong one. Okay, wow. sorry for that. Cool. So what do we get for the next pre-title sequence, you think? What, what would, would oh. you like to see? Something that brings down the house again. Yeah, just... Just make you be proud of being a Bond fan. An Acro star coming out of a horse's ass. Amen. <laughs> With a seagull on his ass. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah. Okay, guys, that's it for now. See you later. Ciao. Bye. <laughs>For everybody who, like Martin, has never heard of Alan Partridge before, here is a clip of Alan Partridge narrating The Spy Who Loved Me. Enjoy. Stop talking about American things and let's watch the best film ever made. Welcome to America's Strongest Man, where the toughest, mightiest titan... Have you taped over The Spy Who Loved Me with America's Strongest Man? No, I haven't. It was Terry. I'll give him the tape. He's done it. It's his fault. I'm really sorry. I, 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 I really wanted to see America's Strongest Man. Well, now you've got Norfolk's maddest man. <laughs> I wanted to watch Roger Moore necking with Fiona Fullerton. <laughs> but instead I have to watch a giant Michael Bolton look-alike in a tight vest throwing an oven over bales of hay. The Spy Who Loved Me is a brilliant film. It began in forest in Germany. It's Austria. The- Austria! <laughs> it's the one where the laser beam goes up his jaw. Your finger! <laughs> but what's the one with the, the, with the volcano and it splits up and a big rocket comes out and there's all chinkies jump, jump and do it? It's not a thunderbolt. No, 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 stop getting Bond wrong! <laughs> I'll tell you about the spy of me. All do that with your fingers around your eye. I'm Roger Moore. <laughs> Blood dribbles down. We're on a submarine. Two sailors sit down and have a game of chess. And the cups start wobbling, and then a man who used to be in the Eden line comes in and goes, Why are the cups wobbling? What's going on? And then he... Yeah, you can stop doing that now. And then he pulls down the periscope thing, looks through it and goes, Oh, my God, the submarine's being eaten by a giant tanker. And then we cut to Moscow. And there's a man there, and he's Russian. He's got eyebrows, you know. And he's on the phone going, What, a whole submarine? You're joking! I'm gonna have to tell some other Russians. See ya! Right, and, then, and then it cuts to James, Roger Moore, and uh, yes, he's with a lady. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's necking with her. Right, and he goes, I've got to go, love. Something's come up. <laughs> he, uh, means, yeah. he means his cock. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, then he, he, he puts on his underpants and his ski suit and he gets on his skis and he starts skiing. And he's being chased by these Russian shits in black jumpsuits with lemon piping. And, uh, and he's just skiing along like that, and, and they start shooting at him, and he goes, right, I've had enough of that, just stop it! And he, and he turns around with this gun, and then he does a backward somersault off this ramp, and he, he lands on his feet. Uh, I'm not sure why, but he's not showing off. And, and then he, and he goes over a cliff, and he's falling, and you think, oh, 
God, James Bond's going to die! He's going to die! <laughs> but then, at the last minute... He pulls a ripcord, right, and a, a parachute comes out and it's got a Union Jack Michael! on it. Michael! Michael! <laughs> that's how it ends! That's yes. not the end of the beginning. The end of the beginning goes like this. Glang! Glang a lang a lang a lang a lang a lang. <laughs> Glang a lang a lang a lang a lang. Nobody does it better. <laughs> and I'm a naked woman in silhouette with a gun, spinning round. Makes me feel sad for the rest. <laughs> Nobody does it. Oh, bit of nipple. <gasps> Quite as good as you. Baby, you're the best. Da, 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 da. And now, really big bounce right over, and I land on my feet. Da, 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 da. I wasn't looking. <laughs> and somehow you found me. Uh, oh, bit of bush. Uh, <laughs> I tried to hide from your love life. And a woman swinging on a luger, a giant luger. Ooh, look at that. Uh, like heaven above me. And now another naked woman walking along the top of a gun. Completely Billy Bollocks. <laughs> That's why you love me. It's keeping all my secrets safe tonight. And then one more big swing from a woman. Legs go right apart. Oh, what was that? Too late. <laughs> Nobody does it half as good as you. Baby, you're the best. Yes! Uh, brilliant! Come on, come on. Brilliant. Yeah, so, uh, do you want to hear some more?